Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, and today I'm going to go over, I'm going to be adding a new character to my comic, Silk and Steel. We're going to be drawing a villain. Um, I'm showing you, these are model sheets of my comic. Um, I like to work for model sheets. I made these model sheets to work from while I'm doing my comic so that all my characters, when I draw them, they look similar. So I have reference for my character. I don't do this for each of the characters, but I'll do them for um, when I'm first doing a character or when I'm doing a main character that I know I'm going to reuse again. This is our one of our main boys. This is Silk. This is Kinyu Ryu. His name means Silk Dragon in Japanese or Nipponese um, for the world of Varus. Varus is an alternate universe that I've created that is a steampunk world that is about... Um, it's in the, um, I would say, um, 1890s, 1880s, 1890s. They're getting on the verge of their equivalent of World War I. And it takes most of the, um, at least the first um, several issues of the comic takes place on an island called Zaratan. That would be roughly where the Philippines are. Um, and it's actually kind of like Shanghai it's or a Tortuga. It's more like a Tortuga where it's a place where anybody, any um, group can come and it's got um, open politics and there's lots of skullduggery that goes on and there's lots of airships and Kraken and there's um, all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on in my world of Varus. But anyways, this is Kinyu Ryu. He's one of the main characters. He is a uh, genjineer. And um, he wears a top hat, and um, basically his outfit's like a tuxedo. He wears a morning coat, and it's blacks and grays. And he is um, basically a chemist or an alchemist and a engineer. So he works with gene engineering. And what I've done is I do a lot of different headshots. It's like this is your side views, front view, three-quarter front, looking up, looking from behind. Um, I want three-quarters on both sides because it's easier for me to look at somebody that way right away rather than to um, have to, you know, imagine in my head, which way is the head turned now? Again, a three-quarter down because, hey, it's a top hat. I mean, this is not an easy um, view to do. And when you do it for a lot of times, it's one thing. But if you can't remember what to do, a three-quarter down shot on a top hat. Anyways, I do it with, with the hat, without the hat. So I've got he, his hair is parted. You can tell slightly on the right hand side so that's why we've got that there um, and again um, without clothes on um, front rear three-quarter front three-quarter rear um, side view um, in his chemistry outfit and the, these are the standard outfits for silk and steel and then this is Malcolm Steel and he is a um, he is a, an engineer. He is Mr. Fix-It Tinkerer. Um, if it's got to be made in any way, shape, or form, he can do it. Um, he's got a, a lot of uh, mystery in his background, and um, he's an intriguing character. But again, with him, he usually wears this nice Australian-style fedora. Um, it's it, Actually, it's not really a story. It's a fedora. It's more like an outback hat and goggles. And um, so I needed to have him from three-quarter up, three-quarter down, three-quarter side view, um, side view, front, three-quarter back. Um, again, a three-quarter side view, or, and this is side view, three-quarter front from both angles. You know, a couple of different angles with the hat. And then, again, a side view, side view, both sides, because his hair parts a little bit differently on each side. Um, from under the chin, looking down, front view, again, um, three-quarter facing to the, um, so right or left, you know, stage right or stage left, three-quarter back, again, different three-quarter front. So you have both your three-quarters. These two views, I've, these two views and the front, your three-quarter fronts, your three-quarter back, and your front view, side view. These actual five shots here are the most important. And then, again, both side views, side view on one side, side view on the other, up, down shot. That's why I, I stick to these basic eight shots, whatever you're doing, um, of a head. The most important is 
side, front, three quarters. But if you can have all eight of these views, um, it's nice to have all eight of them. And here's your standard body without clothes on, three quarter front, side view, three quarter back. And again, this is him in his um, engineering outfit when he's in the foundry. Um, and this is his standard. He wears a, a great coat um, with, um, he's got um, front button fly wool pants that are tucked into lace up boots and a vest. And he wears a, a black um, shirt with um, a really nice ascot. So anyways, those are my two main characters. And I just wanted to show you that this is the way that if I have time to create my own model sheets, I'll do them up like this. And this is for me. I did this for me to look at while I'm doing my comic. Now what we're doing today is I am doing, I'm gonna come up with character who's basically um, a colonel in the airship um, Air Force. So I'm wanting, um, these are World War One uniforms. Um, this is from, that I've taken of various characters off the internet and I'm going to pan these actually rather quickly so it's like I think I can't remember how long that I can have this sort of thing on screen before I'm I'm infringing on copyright but these are various um, people in uniforms from around World War One Navy and then I got some more that are Zeppelin air crews so, or Zeppelin air crews, let me, I don't know, don't know why I want to always put a PH in there, but these are like from Zeppelin air crews from around World War I as well, so that I'm going to do, um, the, the gentleman, or the character that I'm doing today is Hauptmann Kreutz, and Haup, a Hauptmann is the equivalent to a colonel, so I'm, I'm looking at a lot of these different, I like this guy kind of, I like the, 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 the short mustache and the goatee. I love the double beard on this one. Um, I love the short beard, just the goatee again for this gentleman. Um, there are all kinds of interesting uniforms for the air crews that I like. Leather is very popular. Um, I ride motorcycle, and there's a reason why you wear leather with motorcycles or, or where, why the Air Force uses leather. It really is a good barrier against um, the wind. It is an amazing barrier against the wind. Um, but I really like, um, I like the, the, um, the top um, coat on this gentleman for the, um, the Navy. I really like this outfit for the Navy. So I'm gonna play with a couple of, of these uniforms here. I'm gonna put this out, out of the view, but I wanted to show you that this is the kind, we're gonna do some kind of hat like this. I love this, this, um, this is the naval hat for the period around World War I. Um, but if you look here, there's a similar kind of hat. The hat gets more pushed out the brim or the I'm sorry the, the cap on the hat gets wider um, for the Air Force a bit if you look up here this guy's a Navy again this gentleman is a Zeppelin but it's like notice that it the lip comes down a little bit more and it's a little bit wider for the Zeppelin so I kind of like that um, there they've got the crown on it because at this point you've got the um, the military is still under um, probably um, royalty, so they've got um, a crown on the top of theirs. And I'll do something like that, maybe, for the final. But again, we're going to start with that as a reference, and I'm going to play with. I'm just. I'm really not sure which one is like. A, um, what I want to do with the facial hair? I really like this gentleman here. I really like that because we want to make him handsome. He's our villain. He's one of um, the main villains, and you always. You know, you want to, um, I, I like the idea of your liking a villain. I mean, um, let's face it, people love Darth Vader. So it, it's, it's a dependency of how you want to have this guy. Now, I'm thinking he's got to have some kind of great coat. Now, what I'm doing right now, I'm just giving this a real rough form of what what I want to fill my space um, trying to give a um, a uh, feeling of uh, what his presence going to be so it's like I'm doing volumes I always start out with a little bit of a volume 
getting kind of attitude, where the shoulders, where the hips are going. Um, I'm thinking, okay, I was going to have one of those hats. It's like when I get into the, the hat, head more, but I like, I like this kind of, it's not quite your police hat yet. It's not quite your military hat. It's more of a pillbox on the top around World War One, and I kind of like that. It, it's, um, I like the old-fashioned quality to it. So I'm probably going to give him that. I'm going to give him a high collar. Definitely high collar. And somebody pointed out, um, it was, um, I was watching, um, the, uh, uh, docudrama Empress, and they have a high collar, um, so that if you, uh, if you get hit by um, a sword on a high collar, you're less likely to um, have a fatal injury. You know, that's where your carotid arteries are. So it's like if you're in the military, they would have those high stiff collars because you were less likely to get killed if your carotid's protected. Um, which is one of the reasons for the high collar. Now, again, my, my tools right now, um, I've got... This is a, uh, um, a standard uh, mechanical pencil. This is just a straight Pentel Click 0.7 with an HB lead, and I always have a kneaded eraser in hand. The paper that I'm using is um, for color Xerox. Um, it's um, I'll put put a um, what type of paper is down below. Um, I used to love. Um, if you can get it, is Ingram animation paper is some of the best stuff to draw on. Um, it's really tough to get nowadays. You can get it from Footloose Animation. You can still get Ingram. Oh, I'm thinking I want him to have, you know, for the, the the wide lapel, the one that goes one goes under and one goes open. Um, most of the lapels here are even, but hey, it's my world, so I get to decide what I'm going to do with it. So I'm going to have a narrow lapel and a wide, wide lapel, I think. And now um, on the, um, I don't think that uh, they got rid of a lot of the, um, oh, what are they called? As, I, as I'm giving you the, the description, um, yeah, I'm liking that. Some of them have fur. I think maybe fur on when when we uh, when I illustrate this, do fur on this portion of the collar, since he's going to be um, primarily an airship um, gentleman. And epaulets of some sort. No, I'm mean, thinking that the the type of epaulets that captains would have, the commanders would have. In the British Navy, where you have the the gold bullion around the edges, by the mid to late 1800s, they had taken that all out of the middle military. Um, question is, um, he's parading around. I think we want the longer coat, so we'll put that coat there. And I love job spurs. Job job spurs. Um, my main character, um, um, Spitfire has got, uh, she's got Jadspurs and the, the Germans used to have them big time in, uh, the officers by the time they got to World War II, but I like the Jadspurs. Um, for some reason, I really look good on guys. Um. And of course, high boots. Gotta have good high boots, riding boots. It's like the the, the thing that that indicates that you are a knight, or you've got money, is you can pay for a lot of cattle skin. So anybody who's got a good pair of boots, they've got money. And in the military, the only people in the military. Who would have full-on boots? The officers, because they can afford it. And up until, geez, I think World War II, 
I mean, officers would come from the upper class. You weren't allowed to be an officer if you were from the lower classes. You, that's what a non-com was. Non-com was, you know, a sergeant who came from um, the lower classes. Um, so it was difficult to become an officer in the military. If you're gonna have that all the way over there, then the then the uh, bolt's gonna be over there. So we have got the initial setup here for our outfit. I'm gonna pull those jazz pers in just a bit. I mean, I'm thinking along the lines of this guy here is really nice, or um, this guy here. Um, he's got this big baggy coat, and you can tell it's leather, and he's um, definitely, a, this is a Zeppelin crewman. I mean, these are really great, the crewman guys here, but this guy, love that. Oh, you know what he needs? You know what he needs more than, he needs um, basically just the ascot, you know? So it's like there's a collar there, but I think that maybe he's got just the scarf. Yeah, that works. Okay, so he's got the scarf in there. Now, let's work on the face. Now that, we, now that we've got our basic outfit here, and this is how I make my decisions. Um, I mean, once I make my decision, it's like, th this, is, this is basically it. It's not going to change much from here. I don't, um, one of the things when you're, you're storyboarding or you're doing things for animation, you don't have a lot of time to make a lot of different decisions. You've got to make your decisions now, and it's like, and... Once you make a decision, it's kind of like better set in stone or what have you. Okay, now he's going to have, you know, what am I going to do for this nose? Just your straight. I'm thinking German, but, you know, Roman nose. I want him to be a bit of a bulldog. But the thing is, like I said, I want him to be, um, I really like this gentleman here. I like how handsome he is. He's a, he's a very handsome, very very freaking German. <laughs> I'm sorry. My family, my whole family is German. Um, my maiden name is Glasnop. Yeah. Oh, God. Excuse me. It was a, a name that was well worth getting rid of. Um, no offense to my brother and my nephew. You can keep it. I don't want it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, my, my, my family was probably... Um, they actually uh, were bankers in Berlin. You can find um, my family's name on money. Okay, that's looking good. Now, I want to give him, you know, that's that's a nice German puss, but let's, I want to give him a good turn of the century look. So we want to, I'm thinking, you know, at least, yeah. Yeah, I really like, yes. Definitely like the goatee. That's definitely a must. It's like I said, the, the, this guy here, I really, he, he's definitely, he, he's, he's getting into my brain here. I'm thinking definitely along those lines with the, uh, he, he's, he's, cap, this guy's going to be basically Captain Hook with the crew, the bumbling crew. You know, it's like one of the things that, that I see Captain Hook as is Captain Hook was the intelligent one. And for some reason, he's always surrounded by idiots. And that's kind of not that, you know, the Germans are going to be more or less our keystone cops, but not entirely. Um, but, oh yeah, that's working. That's definitely working for me. Okay. Okay, so. And probably he's going to have some medals along here. Um... I like the 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 British guys got got put put a couple of you always need the uh, let's see here probably gonna have his wings and a zeppelin here if we start dealing we've got to detail that eventually but uh, basically there's Hauptmann okay now let's let's do a couple of faces on him and. I'm going to just do these, like I said, really fast. I will probably um, adjust them when I finally get into the comic. But um, we've got this. Let me get that. I mean, I really love, if you look at this hat, 
that's definitely the, that that very strange both of these guys I love this this almost pillbox type brim that's going along with the first world war it's like and then the really really short um, that that short bill and so it it gives an interesting silhouette to the face but so it's, it's tipped back and then it's got that coming around here and I haven't decided what we'll, we'll put on the logo yet I'll worry about that later um, And so, let's see here. I'll look at this guy again. Look at this one. I don't have that brim quite right, but I'm not going to worry about it. Right now, I, like I said, everything is, is really loose. And the face is going to more down there. Oh. And again, this is what I love about a kneaded eraser, is I'm ghosting back. This is what I call ghosting back. When I've, I've done all that drawing, I really ground my pencil into the paper. And then I'll ghost back everything that I've already drawn. But what's staying there are the lines that I was having, having up the most. Um, my brain says, okay, this, this line here is the most important to me. And this line here is the most important to me. And so when I ghost it back... Um, it's like I've given myself a um, scaffolding to draw on top of. Okay. I want to do with that nose. The nose is, is bugging me right now. It's okay. It's okay. I want to give him a German nose, but uh, it's like how big? And the thing is, is that it's going to be this mustache or goatee that really defines him. Yeah, the lip. There we go. And I'm thinking this cheek going down pretty straight. Give him kind of those interesting brows where it's thickened in front side do that area under the eye keep a really thin eye itself I want this yeah I'm thinking the nose I want to come straight down I want I want him to be a lot of angles okay and what are we gonna do with the sideburns hmm I mean this is this is steampunk so I should have Kind of interesting sideburns and yeah, the sideburns should be coming down all the way rather than showing his cheek it's like he's going to have a sharp cheek let's, mm, let's see here sharp cheek let's give him yeah Nice clean sideburn, knife like. There we go. Because Hauptmann, um, we want him to be just full of himself. This particular character basically sees himself as the next viewer, you know. It's like he's you know, around idiots, and he's going to decide what's going on in this existence. So, um, he's more, um, your standard, I'm trying to think what, um, character 
I've seen in movies that, that he's like, but it, it's one of these things where he never thinks, he, he's one of those people who never thinks he's wrong. That when things go wrong, it's not his fault. It's because he got the wrong people to do the job, which is often the case. Um, and, and when we first meet him, what's going on is um, he was supposed to have um, Silk kidnapped and they're supposed to have the formula that Silk's got that everybody's after. And he's not as interested in Silk as he is in the formula, but either or, neither one of the things that he has been trying to get has been gotten. So, he was expecting um, the mad scientist Zewurst and Renfield to get this stuff for him, and he paid them to get it, and uh, they ran into some problems. And so... The first time we see him, he's in Dr. Zur's lab, giving Zur's the what for, for not having uh, taken care of his project. So you can see, I, I'm getting starting to get, there's my three quarter, three quarter. Let's do a side view. And I will refine this, and it'll be really refined once I get to ink. When you're doing pen and ink, it's, it's like you don't have any choice. Right now, I'm doing everything like really, really sloppy and really loose because um, this is the first time I've done this on top of camera where, you know, I'm actually doing it in front of people while I'm... Because technically, even though you're not here, you are here. And uh, I wouldn't be as worried because um, I'm doing this for myself. So he's got kind of the nose, a little bit of a Roman nose here. There we go. That's what I'm thinking for. And then, again, I'm wanting that bit of a cheat there. So the thing is, is that when I'm, I'm, I'm going through this and I'm kind of um, feeling around, you know, it's like I didn't put the whole ball of the head there. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of doing, okay, here's the brim of his hat. That's going to go up there. The band goes back. We've got this here, but the whole ball of his head is not there because if you're doing actual head, you know, the ear's about the center and the back of the head's there, so the, the whole brim of the hat's going to go all the way back there. And that's, again, that's where you're going to do something like this in pencil, or if you're doing this on computer, the computer's beautiful in the respect that, you know, hey, you've got, um, all you do is, um, when I set up my, um, stylus on computer I'll set up the the button here I'll set up that button for my eraser so you have your clicker that does the right click on mine the right click is actually the back button the front button is my eraser so I I will so if you've got um, a stylus where um, on your computer here's my stylus right here this is the type of stylus I use for my um, computer. It's a Wacom stylus, but it's called a classic because I've got small hands and I got this specifically, but my front button, I set up this one right here as the eraser and the back one I set up as my right click. Um, and I, my, my clicker pencil, it's like, Hey, you just, I always have, like I said, I have my, my needed eraser close by and I will just ghost to back again. See what happens. Um, I have got all this um, all the information that I've really wanted, that my brain really wants, I'm keeping it really loose. I'm not really focusing on what I'm doing really heavily. And then I can go back and pick up the lines more that I want. And his, that ear is a little high. Be right, right about there is, and then you have a button there. And I haven't, I'll, I'll put, come together for a logo. I'll figure out a logo for the top of that. I haven't decided, you know, um, he's from the, uh, Holtzberg empire. It's the Habsburg empire, um, in world war one, 
but um, we're going to call it the Holtzberg Empire. Okay, so now I figured out the nose. You see, I wanted that nice chisel nose. I keep on playing with this nose, and I wanted it straight. I want a German slash Roman nose. I don't want it quite Roman. I want it more of a chiseled look. So there we go. There's my nose. Yeah. Okay, and then the lip bone here. that nice goatee jaw and again I want this I want him to have generous sideburns because it, it is the um, I'm doing this as a steampunk and I like sideburns I'm not giving him mutton chops mind you and I have some some gentlemen in my my uh, comic that have the good old mutton chops because in my comic I'm extending mutton chops all the way up to the 20th century man I like I like sideburns. I think they look cool. Mutton chops got a little bit out of hand at certain times, and it's like, hey, exaggeration is what comics are all about. So as he's gonna have, oh yeah, when he's not wearing his ascot, we need to have him have. There we go, Hauptman. Thank you. You are here. So this is basically all I need. Um, I could do a three-quarter back too. It's like three quarter back um, but these are the ones that I need mostly for and the uh, full view for what I'm doing for my comic book and from there I'll, I'll do a finish I, I, I you know I'll have everything that I need to work up my character and then I will put the details on him while I'm inking and um, basically that'll make the the look in the comic book and I'll use the pages that I've drawn in the comic book as my reference after that rather than um, do as detailed as I've done here with steel since steel like I said he's a main character and I took time and I really wanted to work him up because he's my hero he's one of my heroes so I'm, I'm working and I'm trying to get him absolutely right every time Hauptman will evolve he'll become um, I basically set him in stone. I know what I want him to be. I've got him in my head now. Here's basically a three-quarter back on Hauptman. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna be clean cut. A um, little bit of curl to his hair, not much. He's gonna have a bit of wave to his hair. Um, when he takes off that hat, um, I don't think we're gonna see Hauptman without the hat for quite a while, but um, I'm thinking, oh yeah, we didn't do a front view straight on front view so we need that's more or less I mean it's it's like I don't um, I try to stay away from straight on front views um, side views are okay front views I try to stay away from I usually try to do things in three-quarter just because it gives more dimension to anything that you're doing when you um, do things front view, um, you lose dimension. It goes flat. So I, I often will try to do primarily three-quarter views and side views at, at best and try to stay away from front views if I can. Um, I don't find them necessary for shots for the most part. I mean, even when I'm, I'm setting up shots for animation, um, I try to stay away from um, side and uh, front views just because again um, anytime you're front or side you're going to be losing the dimension you're gonna, you know you things will start feeling flat and notice you've got that that bill okay I'm gonna come up here so you can see brow yeah so the bill is going to be a little bit higher and it's part of the top of the hat. It's going to be a little bit higher. Yeah. And of course, there's mutton chops, jawline. There we go. That's a relatively good front view. And that's it. That is doing a setup for a character using, you know, this, this is this is basically kind of the gentleman I wanted to use.
but I wanted, like I said, I wanted Hauptman, Hauptman to have a little bit of a more of a rugged look to him. Um, let's see here if you can see. I realize that the full view got a little bit off camera. My apologies there. There we go. Open a little bit further. And that is my setup for Hauptman. He's my next, it, it's, um, it's going to be Hauptman. Yeah, told you I was heavy-handed. Oh, man. Right. Uh, and uh, in German, EU is oi. Just for your edification. Anyways, that's Hauptmann Kreutz. And um, I'll put my uh, link to my comic, Silk and Steel, in the bottoms if you'd like to take a look at what I've done so far where I'm up to chapter three it's going slow I'm, I'm doing about a page a week that's why I, I've got a patreon for it but I'm not really putting it up much on the web yet the web yet because reading a page a week is kind of slow but uh, thank you for stopping by hope you got something out of that and uh, appreciate your coming by um, subscribe uh, like this video and I'll be putting up once a week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.